as a special bonus round for this week's show. Myself, Jim Graham, and Dave Sadler have a special guest on the line. He will be fighting at World Series of Fighting 11 on July 5th on the NBC Sports Network against Pablo Alfonso. He is Mr. Cody Bollinger. And Cody, thanks for joining us here on Beyond the Cage, presented by Fight Chicks. Well, and thanks for having me, guys. It's always fun uh, doing interviews with you guys. Now, Cody, I know it just turned summer, but it always feels like it has been summer since Memorial Day hit. So how has your summer been so far? Um, it's been good, man. A uh, lot of family time and uh, a lot of hard training. Now, with your fight being on July 5th, I'm assuming, does that change your normal 4th of July plans? <laughs> yeah, um, instead of lighting fireworks, uh, July 4th, I'll probably be cutting some weight. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely different from the normal. Now, do you typically do anything special for the 4th of July, or just kind of maybe have some barbecue and, you know, light off some bottle rockets or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, usually I just, uh, you know, get as bad as I can, hang out with the family, but, uh, uh, I mean, I guess I'm going to do the same thing on 4th of July, just in a different way. Um, <laughs> after I make my 35, I'm going to get as bad as I can and then uh, fight the next day. Now, Cody, just looking back a little bit here on your time on The Ultimate Fighter, regardless of the outcome of the show, would you say that experience helped you as a fighter? Um, I, I, I mean, the the way it ended obviously sucked, but, um, you know, it, it led to, you know, great opportunities. It was a great opportunity, and um, it, honestly, it really helped uh Mentally and uh, it helped my confidence. You know, um, I always thought that I was on a certain level, and then going there and being able to do what it did, and then the fight to get in the house, and then being able to, um, you know, practice with these other guys that were on the level that were like, and do what I was able to do and practice against them. Um, really opened my eyes to, you know, I could, uh, I could really, you know, do something great with this sport. Now, after you left the show, fellow contestant Anthony Gutierrez also missed weight, and I was wondering, what did you think when you heard the news of that happening? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks, you know. Uh, it It's hard, because I wasn't there. I don't know the story behind why he missed weight. Uh, <laughs> You know, obviously, you know, the way they showed on TV, you know, it's edited and they didn't make it look a certain way. I mean, it could have been, you know, he was just being a fat ass and, you know, didn't care and ate. But, you know, I don't know. Um, and, you know, I'm not really in a position to judge. But it, uh, it's crazy the guy on this weight to fight misses weight, you know, two weeks later. Now, that season of The Ultimate Fighter was eventually won by Chris Holdsworth, and I was wondering, what did you think about Chris Holdsworth, you know, winning the tournament and the time you spent with him uh, inside the house? Um, he's, he's tough, man. His ground game is really, really good, and he's just an overall tough fighter. And, um, you know, I and kind of knew when I missed weight that, uh, you know, out of the people who were left there, you know, now that I was out, it, it, it was going to be all good to win. Hey, Cody, I, I promise this is the last Ultimate Fighter question. Um, are you watching this season at all, or have you watched any season since you were on? I watched, like, the first half of uh, the first episode of, like, the fights to get in the house for this season. Like, the only way I don't watch the show, you know, um, I, I like to watch the first episode just to see, you know, the fights see in a mask. Sometimes there's some pretty good fights. And, um, but it's weird that you asked that because last night one was, I don't know if it was a replay or something, but one was on. And, uh, I watched the, the fight of that episode, but yeah, that's it. You know, I wanted to go back. Jim was talking about the 4th of July and Independence Day and everything. I noticed, uh, on your Twitter, 
that you had a cool opportunity with, um, I think it was with Darren Crookshank and, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, maybe Shayna Baszler or something. You got to go visit the troops. Uh, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, man, I actually had a really, really good opportunity. Um, the guy who, you know, everybody knows on Twitter is anime roasted, um, Adam Hunter. He, uh, he hit me up because he, uh, he's got a friend who runs these tours and, uh, they bring out, you know, people who go to bases, you know, in different countries where the troops are deployed and kind of just boost them around and hang out, um, you know, and meet these awesome troops that are stuck there for, you know, nine months or, 12 months or however long they're there. And, um, yeah, it was a great opportunity and a lot of fun. It was with Darren Kruchank, Shane Baylor, and Justin and Duke. And, um, you know, having been on the show with two of them and then knowing Darren before that, it, uh, it was a really great atmosphere and we had a lot of fun. Cool. Well, as, as a, as a Marine myself, I, uh, I can definitely appreciate any, uh, any kind of morale boost because, uh, when I was deployed, morale is key. And unfortunately, when I was deployed, the, uh, the whole MMA scene wasn't as big as it is now. So I didn't get to see any cool fighters come to visit me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was, um, man, it was really a great experience. You know, it, uh, it, it was weird to me because, you know, I, I really appreciate what these guys do. And I really look up to people who can do that, you know. It's, uh, I don't know, man. It was, um, it was weird having these, you know, soldiers come up to me like, you know, thank you for coming out. I mean, this is, you know, awesome to meet you guys. And, you know, I was just like, you know, like, you know, this is fun for us. This is, you know, our honor, our, our blessing to be able to do this. And, you know, they're thanking us, and I, I don't know, it just it threw me off a little bit the way they treated us, but um, it, it was very humbling and a lot of fun. Now, Cody, be honest, the troops were more happy to see Jessamine and Shayna than you and Darren, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, man. They were more happy to see the girls than us, for sure. I think, uh, you know, because we'd put on seminars, and then we'd go live with, you know, anybody who wanted to. Like, they were long lines to go with Shanna and Jess and then um, you know, me and Darren got some some of the bigger buffer guys, but uh for the most part they're after Shanna and Jess and <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cody. Um you fought for Bellator once, you fought for World Series of Fighting, and uh looking back you fought for King of the Cage. I've wondered what's the the major difference in those organizations? Um are there major differences that we as fans can't really see, um, you know, through our TV screen or, you know, live? Is there any difference for you, the fighter? Um, the pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it's all the same to me, you know, now at least, you know, back then, it, you know, going from King of Cage and letting a challenge to, you know, something like Bellator or Open Fighter, it, it was awesome for me, you know, it was crazy. Oh, you know, it's a huge step, a big step. But now it's just, you know, every fight's the same. Every fight is, you know, my toughest fight, biggest fight, whatever. Um, you know, so now it's it's all the same to me. You know, I go out, I have as much fun as I can, and, you know, recover and get ready for the next one. Cody, I promise that we're working our way towards the World Series of Fighting Fight on July 5th. Just two, a couple more questions, and we'll get into that. But uh, speaking of Bellator, were you surprised that uh, Bjorn Rebney was let go, and uh, now Scott Coker's running Bellator? Yeah, man, that was uh, <laughs> that was something that kind of came out of blue. You know, I don't, I, I watch Bellator. You know, they they do put on some great fights, but um. I don't follow it too closely. You know, I couldn't tell you what tournament they're on right now. Um, but yeah, when I heard about that, that was, uh, that was pretty crazy, man. And, you know, as soon as I heard that Bjorn was let go, I, I kind of had a feeling they were going to bring Scott Coker in. And, uh, I was wondering how they were going to get around, you know, the whole strength force, him not being able to, you know, do whatever, I don't know the you know, details behind it, but, 
I figured they'd find a way to bring him in there and you know, I have to have help out Bellator. And I think it's pretty cool, man. It's uh, it's going to be a fresh new thing, especially since, you know, supposedly they're getting ready to uh, get rid of the tournaments. I think it'll be great for Bellator and uh, they might find some more success, you know, or it could go the exact opposite and, you know, tank <laughs> like it. You know, so we'll, we'll see, man. I'm excited to see what Coker can do. We, um, j- just as a, as a follow-up, you said you're not sure what tournament they're on. Me and Jim follow it on a weekly basis, and sometimes we're confused what tournament they're on. So just, <laughs> just, wanted, just, wanted, to throw that, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> right on. You know, looking at your last fight, it was a close fight, but uh, give us give us your evaluation of your performance. I mean, I, I definitely respect Tyson Man, but um, it takes two to fight. And, uh, you know, I was happy with my performance. I went out there and stood on my feet for three rounds straight with the guy who knocked out the door of You know, the guy's got some freaking power. He almost knocked me out in the first round. Um, I was happy with my performance. He, uh, he was definitely worried about the ground with me. I, I could tell. And, um, he was definitely worried about me taking him down. Um, little did he know that there was no way I was even able to wrestle or grapple that fight. Uh, I had some, uh, some pretty serious injuries that, you know, stopped me from being able to grapple or wrestle. Uh, two weeks before the fight, all I could do was run. And, um, you know, so it worked out for me that, you know, he was, uh, he was worried about my wrestling and, you know, the whole game plan was for me to just try to hit him and not get hit. <laughs> You know, after the fight, it seemed like there was a lot of negative talk. Uh, were you surprised? Uh, obviously, right now you just said how you couldn't do a whole, you couldn't do a whole lot of grappling, just, you know, running, uh, those two weeks before the fight. But did some of the negative talk, did that surprise you at all? No, not at all, man. I knew coming off the ultimate fight or what had happened, yeah, regardless of how good I do for, you know, the next couple of fights, there's going to be people talking, and uh, it, it's not going to always be good. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't bother me, you know. I'm, I'm trying to get used to the fact that, you know, as long as people are talking about me, it's good. Whether they say good things or bad things, as long as they're talking about me, that's what I want. You know, that's what gets me paid and gets me the bigger checks. You know what? I'm glad that you said the ultimate fighter because I'm going to turn this around. I have one more question. On the ultimate yes. fighter, Cody, uh, there was a young man there that was around. I believe he was one of your coaches, uh, and he just had a fight. And I'm speaking of Brian Caraway, of course. And uh, he just uh, – he was in the news for all the wrong reasons. Um, and I got to have a spirited uh, Twitter conversation with you <laughs> Um in regards to this fight, um, how was Mr. Caraway on The Ultimate Fighter, and uh, when can we book Caraway Bollinger? Uh, anytime that that's able to happen, I'm down. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't have, like, a serious hate for the guy or anything, but um, I, I just don't like how they play the victim. I say they because, you know, obviously he's with Tate, and... Um, you know, they they just they act innocent and they play the victim like, you know, they've never done anything. They act like they don't antagonize, you know, the whole Ronda and Misha feud. I don't know, man. The the fish hook thing really pissed me off. I don't know, you know. Oh, it didn't lead to the choke or it was an accident, you know, it doesn't matter. It it was obvious, it was blatant and um it, it was kinda low, you know, but you know, like I said, uh, good or bad, if people are talking about you, it's good. You know, so uh, Brian Carraway staying busy. I'm sure he's going to have another big fight soon. And he's doing good in the UFC, so you can't hit on him, you know. Um, but, yeah, I'll fight him any time we can. You know? <laughs> he, he bumped out of our wrestling match. We were supposed to wrestle at Agon, and he didn't think I'd say yes. And then he pumped out when I had Askren call him up. <laughs> nice. Um, all right, let's get back to World Series fighting. Sorry about getting off on a tangent, but uh, I am not a huge Caraway fan, so I had to get the opportunity to poke at him. All right. Um, after you beat Tyson, were you expecting to uh, face Marlon Moraes 
for your next fight? Yeah. That's what I told was told what's gonna happen, you know, I was told I'd get Moranch whenever that fight gets in. And um they actually called me two days after the fight and offered me Moranch in March. Um knowing that, you know, I had two broken ribs at the time and a, a pretty bad shoulder. I said, no, I can't take it in March. Can we do it in April or May? I'll, I'll fight him any time after, but March is too soon. I really need to recover. I mean, you saw my uh, last fight. I couldn't wrestle or grapple at all. And um, they said, yeah, we're going to have him race fight in March, and then, you know, you'll get him after as long as he wins. Um, then he goes and fights Redding House, uh, tears apart Redding House, but... Redding House took him down a couple times. I think that kind of worried his manager. And um, now I all of a sudden need another fight to prove myself, which doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not in charge. I, like I keep saying, I get paid the same regardless. So, you know, I'll fight Pablo and three other Pablos if I have to. You know, it doesn't matter to me. I'll, I'll get my title shot eventually. Um, hopefully Marais is still there and hasn't moved on. I really would like to fight the guy. Speaking of Marais, give us a a quick synopsis. What do you think of him as a fighter? As a fighter, he's good. Um, It's hard, man, because, you know, I I don't want to disrespect any of his last opponents, but I feel like they go in there to try and not to lose instead of going in there to win. And that's a huge, those are two completely different, you know, fights. If you want to try not to lose, you're just, you know, you're doing your thing and trying to survive, which is what I feel his opponents have done in the last couple of fights. Um, whenever I finally get my chance, I'm going to go in there to win. I'm going to bring the fight to him. I'm not going to be scared. And, um, oh, it, I mean, his leg kicks are freaking awesome. The, the guy's a monster. I take nothing away from him. He, he's a great fighter. But I definitely, definitely see some holes in his game that I just happen to be really good at it. And, uh, you know, I think it'd be a great fight between us two. I think it'd be a really exciting fight. And, you know, who knows? I may go in there and just get my ass whooped for five rounds. But, you know, I would love to find out. Jim Graham and Dave Sather talking with Cody Bollinger. You can follow him on Twitter. It's just his name, at Cody Bollinger. Up ahead of his fight at World Series of Fighting 11 against Pablo Alfonso. And looking at your opponent, Cody, in Pablo Alfonso, was there anything special you did in your training camp to prepare for him? No, I mean, um, I don't really change up my training camps at all for my opponents. You know, obviously, you know, I'll, I'll do some homework and watch their fights, and, you know, we'll, we'll game plan a little. But uh, the game plan is always the same. You know, you go out there, you start fast, you finish fast, and you know, just keep the pressure and, Wherever the fight goes, just be ready to fight, you know, every second of every round, you'd be ready to fight. Um, obviously, you know, there's certain things we do for each fight, you know, for each guy, we'll change up a couple little things, but um, for the most part, it's, it's always the same, you know, just trying to get better and sharpen my tools. Now, when you were breaking down film of Alfonso, what does he bring to the table as a fighter? Um... Obviously, his grappling is really good. He's uh, he's pretty athletic. He's tough. You know, he's fast. He, he looks strong. He looks like he can hit pretty hard. Um, you know, he goes, he goes pretty well rounded. But um, you know, I feel I'm better in almost every area. And um, with, with my wrestling background, you know, I'm going to dictate where the fight goes. If he starts beating the crap out of me on our feet, I'm going to take him down. And, trying to beat him up there. And now if he starts getting close to stopping me, I'll stand back up and I'll try again on my feet. You know, I'm going to dictate where this fight goes. I decide, you know, where this fight stays and where it doesn't. And um, now that's one great advantage I feel I have. But he's not going to stop my wrestling. There's nobody in World Series who can stop my wrestling. And um, that's one thing I really take pride in is being able to get a takedown anytime I want and being able to stop any takedowns that, you know, people would attempt on me. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a fun fight, and we'll see where it goes. 
All right, we'll get you out of here with this, Cody. The main event of World Series of Fighting 11 is for the lightweight championship as Nick Newell will take on Justin Gaethje. And I was wondering, who did you have in that one? Uh, I got Gaethje, man. I think he's going to run through Newell. Um, Nick Newell is a great guy, really tough fighter. Um, you know, but I just think Gaethje's on another level right now, and um, I don't see him losing. I really think Casey's going to finish him in the first three. He is Cody Bollinger. He will be fighting on July 5th, NBC Sports Network, for World Series of Fighting 11 against Pablo Alfonso. Once again, you can follow him on Twitter, at Cody Bollinger. And, Cody, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to talk with uh, Dave and I, and good luck on the 5th of July. Uh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, like I said, it's always a good time coming on here, so thank you, guys. Once again, that was Cody Bollinger right here on Beyond the Cage, presented by Fight Chicks.